All right, all right, all right. We're live. Jesse Dobeck here, the Beyond Big Influence show. And I have a special guest with me here today, one of my great friends who is absolutely crushing it. Every time I call this guy, he's like, dude, I just signed up like 400 car dealerships or five real estate agents. Now I'm exaggerated, but we're going to get to his story here in a second. This guy's the networking king. He, I, I've networked through some of my contacts to get to him, and then he's networking with me to get to really good contacts in my network and vice versa. And I'm, I'm here to learn from him how he's such a good networker because I've literally been on the phone with a lot of millionaires and different people in different industries, developed clients from him that are some of my best clients. So I'm super grateful to know this guy. He's just been like such a good force and and just great energy in my life. I mean, I could talk to this guy all day and um, just going to share a little background quick, James. And I'm just super pumped for you, man, because every time I talk to you, you're always telling me how you just got some new client or this big, exciting new person that's going to plug you into a thousand new clients. So I, I want to share with you what James does with his info. And it freaking is epic. It's like a uh, virtual business card on steroids. And actually, the first time I talked to James, I'm in Mexico and I could hardly even talk to him through the phone. He's like, dude, let me send you this link. And then it was a crystal clear connection. Yeah. And it was like video. And it was just like, and he's like, dude, it's like on a cloud or I can't remember. He'll, he'll explain it. But, you yeah. know, his, his technology is absolutely next level. Okay. It's better than like cell phones and all this stuff. So anyway, so James has been an entrepreneur. You've been an entrepreneur, dude, since you were a kid. Yeah. Like how, like how old? Uh, 12 was probably when I hit it, man. 12 was my first kind what, of cool set. What were you selling? Uh, so I, I wanted to buy a horse, you know, what most 12 year old kids want to do. So I, uh, I got a paper <laughs> route. That's it. Back in the day, that's what you had to do. I'm 41 years old now. So when I was 12, you couldn't go on YouTube and play with toys and make 80 million a year. So yeah. you had to, you know, figure it out. Lemonade stand, paper route, you know, something like that. So I figured that out and that was my first kind of entrepreneurship journey because I didn't know what I was doing. I had to learn it and then hit some adversity, which we can talk about if you want or whatever, and figured out solutions to problems, man. And I scaled it, you know? So I'd say 12 years old, bro, is when I started. Yeah, that's started. amazing. So you've been, you've been doing work in the automotive industry, real estate. You're a top earner in, a network mar in the network marketing industry. And you're a partner in the Infone company, yes, right? Sir. Yep, correct. So... I know you're goal oriented. You're always positive every time I talk to you. And like, it, it's a breath of fresh air because I talk to a lot of like East Coast people. They always say, you know, the, the West Coast people, you're too laid back. And then the East Coast people, you're too like in your face and all this stuff. Right. So they always have that stereotype. You've been like such a positive person. Whenever I talk to you, you're just always excited, always coming up with solutions and, you know, you're, you're always network. You're the ultimate networker, man. Like you're, you're always like, dude, you got to meet this person. This person's going to put a hundred thousand a month in your business. You know? <laughs> yeah. And they do. <laughs> yeah. Is awesome. And they do, you know, yeah. and it's like, man. So, so I love your passion. I've seen you speak. Well, I haven't seen you speak, but I've seen the, the pictures yeah. and some of the videos that you speak in on stage. I know you like inspire a lot of people all over the world. So, you know, I'm honored to have you on the show, man. James Levins, everybody. Thanks. Bro. Uh, yeah, man. I want to know more about your story. Like how did, yeah, I know you started off as a kid with the lemonade stands and paper routes and stuff. What, what was your first thing that you did like, or to kind of tell your backstory of, of how you kind of came up and went through the ringer from yeah. like where you started to success yep. and what, and what it took to get there, you know, Definitely, man. tell us your story. Yes. Yeah, so I'm very blessed. You know, I have an amazing family. That's where it all started. You know, belief in me and my family and my parents are amazing people. And I'm one of six kids, bro. I, there's three boys, three girls. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm very blessed that, that, that was my life growing up. We're very close family, very close knit family. We're all entrepreneurs, all of us. And the funny thing is my dad, my dad, imagine raising six six kids, right? So my dad mm -hmm. was traveling yeah. five, six days a week, making money, 
to pay for all of us. My mom was literally taking care of all of us during the week because my dad was out working to pay for all of us. So it's crazy to think about that. And it was just so cool growing up in my household because everybody was just ambitious. And my parents used to always tell us, you know, always believe in yourself, because if you don't believe in yourself, it's going to be a struggle growing up, you know, and wanting to do anything and hit goals. So that was the first key. And I know people watching this, you might say, oh, it's easy for you. Then you got a cool family. My family is this or a broken home, whatever. And I appreciate where I come from. And I appreciate the fact that if you came from a broken family, maybe you found somebody outside, maybe somebody that that has, you know, uh, belief in themselves. I can show you how to do it and so on and so forth. So coming out of that family, I had a head start. That's number one. I'm going to mm-hmm. tell everybody. I had a head start coming yeah. out of my family. And sorry, my screen's bl- my screen blinking on you right now. That's my no. background. Okay, cool. It's good. Because on my end, it's oh, like good. my background. Oh, okay. Anyway, so. So I, uh, yeah, 12 years old, I wanted to buy a horse and that sounds funny, but I found my first passion as a kid, never rode a horse before my life. I rode one in upstate New York, which is funny. It was called Lake George, New York. And I want you to remember, remember that because it comes full circle now in a second. So okay. yeah. Lake George, New York, I rode a horse for the first time at some farm and I go home and I told my parents I wanted one and they said I could have it. That's the first huddle, right? Or the first hurdle, right? I, they said mm-hmm. I could have it. I said, I'm, I'm in. They said, yeah. but you've got to pay for it. So that's where I had to figure out, all right, I'm 12 years old. Nobody's going to hire me at a job. You got you had to be 16 back in the day to work with working papers. I don't mm-hmm. know how it is now, but so anyway, I got a paper out. And here's the whole point of the story. I appreciated what I did when I was 12. I'd get up before school. I'd go and do it. And true story here, man, I started out with a very small route with like 30, 35 papers. And I did it. I did it proudly every morning. I get up and do it. My clients love me because I was always on time and the papers were dry. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, and here's life, the problem is, I wasn't scaling fast enough, meaning I would never get the goal at the end of the day because it was I didn't make enough money. So yeah. I said I had to figure out how to expand my route. So I literally did it and did it. And then I told my district manager, I told her, I said, I want the next available route. And you know, it's funny, bro. She gave it to me immediately without even questioning. No, and I didn't uh, know why. <laughs> it's because she knew the kind of job I did and everybody respected and appreciated that. So I said, every route that opens, I want it. Next thing you know, I grow my route, man. I just grew it real big. I grew up to over 250 papers very quickly. And the problem mm-hmm. is, here's a success problem, success tip was, you know, I'm like three foot three at 12 years. I'm like this big at 12 years three old. Three foot three. Like, I'm literally like nothing. I'm 40 pounds, right? At 12 yeah. years old. <laughs> so I couldn't carry the papers towards the end of the week because they're real thick and heavy. Yeah. And circular. So the whole thing when I, when I do my speeches or whatever, I talk about goal setting and I just say, look, you're going to hit adversity in your life. My adversity was I was too little to carry the papers and I would mm-hmm. have to do like five to 10 at a time and run back and run back. So the long story short is I ended up saying I could come up, I can, I could quit. I can scale back, never get my horse or find a solution. And I ended up buying a golf cart, like an electric golf cart. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, and people think it's BS, dude. When I speak, I <laughs> here's the pictures. I got pictures to prove it. I got everything to prove it, right? So I bought a yeah. golf cart and uh, started delivering my papers. And it was very seamless and very easy for me because I had all the papers in the golf cart, quiet enough to not wake my clients up, small enough to fit on the sidewalk. And I got them done really quick. So my clients ended up tipping me more money because they appreciated the fact that I didn't quit. I didn't bitch and moan like everybody else does. And yeah. I figured out a solution at 12. So the story, and you know, the story almost ends at I bought a horse which is awesome, right? I did that. But it yeah. gets better because I believe that every decision you make today, whether it's business or family, whatever, will and can affect you in the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years down the road. And it did for me. My sister's 10 years old at the time. I'm 12. I bought my horse. She loved it. She said, I'm going to buy a horse one day when I grow up. I'm going to buy a mm-hmm. horse. I said, I'll make a deal with you. Entrepreneurship. I said, if you come every morning with me and deliver my papers with me and split the time, mm-hmm. I'll buy you a horse. literally she every morning would do it and i bought her her first horse and fast forward 25 years later she never stopped her passion she has a 15 acre farm with 55 animals okay how much how much does a horse cost back in the day it was funny i leased it like you lease a car you leased a horse yeah i leased it but then i ended up buying her (laughs) back in the day they're only like a thousand bucks they weren't expensive it's funny my horse ended up when we got her, we didn't know she was pregnant when we got her. <laughs> so I ended up getting a two-for-one deal, which I thought was a killer deal. But just think, 
you got to pay for that other horse every yeah, day. Yeah, you got to pay for right? other food and yeah. everything. There's, you're, but, it, yeah. but it costs well, money every month. The horse is the cheap part to buy. It's don't forget, they got to eat and they got to yeah. you know, live. You got to <laughs> yeah. pay for board. So it gets expensive, man. But that set me up for life, dude. It really did. I learned goal setting. The horse was my goal. Paper out was my vehicle. I hit adversity. I should have quit. I had every reason to quit. I was a kid. Who cares? But mm-hmm. I didn't. And now my sister's living her dream 25 years later, which is pretty cool. That's where it started, bro. Yeah. No, that's awesome. So how did you get into like automotive and yeah. real estate and network marketing? So the whole automotive thing, man. So I always bought and sold. It's funny. I was buying and selling bicycles when I was a teenager. You know, I, I turned 16. <laughs> I started buying and selling cars behind my parents' house and stuff. Oh, like, really? Yeah, like what yeah. kind of cars? Uh, whatever I could buy. I mean, I was buying five hundred dollar cars and selling them for eight hundred bucks. And you know, now you can't. Oh, really? Yeah. Now the economy, you can't <laughs> what's buy. A, what's a five hundred dollar car? Back then, it was pretty decent. Back then, it was pretty decent. <laughs> Today, it's a it's a, a catalytic converter on scrap. Yeah. yeah, yeah, It's like a car that doesn't run. Yeah, well, it won't run. Absolutely. But but here's the funny part: people want they want to pay five hundred, they want a Bentley. And then they yell yeah. at it when the car breaks down. Yeah. Anyway, man, so, you know, I ended up, um, I went to high school. I always had a passion for cars. And I got, I worked at a Mercedes dealership as a detailer. Mm-hmm. I, I love cars. So I wanted yeah. to go be around them. And I, I knew how to wash a car and like, you know, shine the tires. It's like stupid stuff. But I never had to physically detail a car. So what I did was I went to a Mercedes dealer because I love the Mercedes uh, product. And I became mm-hmm. a car washer. You know, I wasn't okay. too proud to do that. I started washing cars at like eight, 19 years old or something like that. And then I started, um, you know, detail, like washing them good. I would do that. And then here's what I do. And I, I speak to a lot of young, you know, young adults and kids these days. I, I have something called the Be the Best You Movement, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But, you know, I, I found somebody that created success and something I wanted to be good at. And guess what I did? I said, how did you do that? Can you teach me? And he was nice enough at the time. He was the best detailer in history, man. He was unbelievable at detailing cars. So mm-hmm. I just said, can I shadow you? And he said, absolutely. So every dad shadow him. And then here's the difference. At nighttime, I would go with him to his second job where he got paid to detail mm-hmm. cars. And I stress this because mm-hmm. I would go there and detail the cars with him and learn. Yeah. Now, uh-huh. most people, and again, I stereotype. I say most people, right? Most people would say, well, how much did you get paid? And I said, zero. I didn't get paid a dime. I got paid college <laughs> education, right? Yeah. So for six uh-huh. months or so, man, every night we'd hammer them out. We'd hammer cars out. And then I learned and I became really freaking good, man. I became really good. And what I did was the Mercedes dealer at the time never offered detailing for their clients. There's people buying mm-hmm. $150,000 cars back in 2002 right oh really you just give them all scratched up like they, straight yeah, off they, the well, lot? They, they buy the new ones and then the people will go get them detailed at other companies to other other oh, okay yeah and i'm like well they don't offer it and i asked them i said why don't you go? They're like nah we don't you know we don't have time for that we don't have the the, the staff for that so i said because we had to detail the cars that were getting sold mm-hmm. so i said okay yeah. i'll tell you what nobody's doing mobile detailing at all you know detailing cars at the people's houses right nobody's doing it yeah. I said, I have a truck. So I asked the guy that, that mentored me, I said, why don't we start a company together? And he said, you know, no, I'm good. I said, okay, well, I'm going to do one. I'm going to start my own. So it wasn't a big deal, like conflict. <clears throat> so I ended up being so good at Mercedes, like product specialist. I studied the cars. I knew them. They put me in the car with the new buyer to show them the cars when they bought the car. Okay. So I took that opportunity. Guys, everything I'm telling you is just a success tip on how to do gain clients. I took that as an opportunity. I got you in the car. You're not going anywhere for 20 minutes. Jesse, congratulations on your Mercedes. If you ever need to get it detailed and keep it looking this great, I'll come to your house on the weekend and I'll detail your car and every other car you have. In my first mm-hmm. 18 months, I, I had 300 clients in 18 months. Oh, wow. And bro, I was killing yeah. it, man. I loved it. Yeah. I had executive auto detailing. Why come to us when we'll come to you? It's okay. Fun. Did you have one of those trucks, like vans? I, I had a truck. So here's the funny part. I started out, I, I already had a Nissan Frontier pickup truck, like a nice little truck. So oh, I just okay. I bought chemicals. I bought a vacuum. And here's the funny part too, man. I used their water, their hose, <laughs> their electricity. Oh, now, wow. You see people with freaking water tanks and generator. I'm like, I just say, where's your outlet? And I plug in with my extension cord. I'm using your stuff, you know, less yeah. over, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but, and then I would gain when I'm there detailing the car, 
I used to, you can't do this anywhere, I don't think, because of laws, but I would have little five by seven postcards of my detail stuff. And as I'm going on the street, and I, and I, I don't mean to stereotype and sound like a jerk, I only did wealthy people. I only work wealthy, but I only did that because why? When I charged them a lot of money, they wouldn't even question. They just pay it or give me a big tip. You know, a lot of people don't want to pay the money I was charging. I said, I'm the best. And guys, I'm not trying to sound cocky. I was just confident. And I believed in myself and my, and what I, my service. I said, nobody's going to touch me. I said, nobody's going to beat what I do. So I charged for it. And every time I'm done detailing a car in a wealthy neighborhood, I'd spend the next hour and a half driving around the neighborhood, putting my flyer in people's mailboxes. Yeah. You know, and, and me, and that's how I built up 300 clients. And it was yeah. great. How much were you charging per, per you detail? All right. So back in the day, I started out at 150 bucks. Okay. Which, okay. Was, which was good. It was great money. I got burned yeah. out after about a year. I got burned out and I'm sitting in the back of a brand new Escalade. And I'm mm-hmm. doing, before they had all the cool stuff now that makes it, I'm scrubbing this carpet and I'm like, you know what? I'm so burned out. Screw it. Next person that wants a detail, it's 300 bucks or I'm not doing it. That's it. Oh, wow. <laughs> the next guy, I don't know if he's yesterday, called me up. He said, hey, I have an SL500 Mercedes convertible. It's this big. The car's small. Silver with black leather. The easiest car in history to ever detail. I mm-hmm. said it's 300 bucks, And I was waiting for him to say it's too much. I was going to tell him, forget it. He's yeah. like, great. Can you do my Porsche 911 too while you're there? <laughs> like, went, for yep. 600 bucks. How long did it take you to do one? Three and a half hours a car. Three and a half oh, hours. wow. Yeah, okay. but it was great, dude. I pull up to the house. So to answer your question, I started out with a truck, a Nissan. I ended up buying an Escalade, and then I ended up having an enclosed trailer with my my sign, you know, my 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 whole logo on the side of it for advertisement, and it was badass. And I would pull up. I literally pulled up to luxury houses in luxury, so that people said, "Wow, this guy must know what he's doing when he's charging me ten million dollars to detail my car." You know, I, I yeah. played the part. I showed it, but I was professional, man, and I was good with the customers and. Jesse, you can't do it these days, but I was crazy. I'd be at a light. I got one of my greatest customers. She was driving a G-Wagon, okay? Yeah, yeah. She was next to me at the light. They came out in 02, so it was probably 03, 04. It was filthy. I jumped out at a red light, knocked yeah. on her window, and I said, here's my business, my my 5 by 7 you know, before info. I give her my card. I will come to your house and make this car look like it left the showroom floor. She yeah. had seven cars, right? She had seven? <laughs> and a big mouth. She told the world about me. She must have got me 40 clients, dude. I mean, Why was her G-Wagon so filthy? She could care less. She, okay. she, it was one of her seven cars. She could care less. Yeah. Okay. But I made her old fleet amazing. And I went there, you know, like once a month and detailed them all. It was just great. Co- but anyway, the point of the story was I went out of my comfort zone, man. Like I jumped out of a – you can't do that these days. People shoot you if you come up to their car. But – I jumped out of the light. <laughs> That's what I'm happened. Going. I'm in Mexico, though. They do that every at every stoplight. Yeah, they clean your, head, <laughs> your windshields and stuff. Yeah, but it's funny, man. Like, but that was that was cool. So and pesos. That's how I that's how I got into um, the auto. But the, to answer your question, how to get in the auto industry was that was my entry, right? Mm-hmm. I met a guy. Again, you ready? I'm going to say it till I'm blue in the face. Everything I've ever done was find somebody who did it really good and ask him how they did it. That's yeah. it. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I went to um, this guy there. He was yeah, a, no, that's a good one. You know, yeah, you have to. You got to use. I mean, because what? Like, Find I, someone who did exactly what you're trying to do the best in the world and go figure, just get the it. information and then go duplicate. They did all the BS work already. They did yeah. it already. They, they're going to give you tips on how to do it easier. You know, it's, I tell people all the time, my, my buddy Ryan used to always say, why would you go ask a guy that's been divorced seven times for marriage advice? <laughs> right? Think about that. Why yeah. would you do that? It does, it's, not, it's probably not going to give you the right answer. So I say, if you want to create success, so this guy, he was a wholesaler, a car wholesaler, right? Wearing mm-hmm. a warm up outfit every day, like a gym outfit every day, never looked like he was any kind of success. And again, stereotypical, right? He's not wearing a suit. <laughs> Nowadays, people wear t shirts and the suit guys work for the t shirt guys, right? Yeah. And so I walked up to him and I said, look, man, I want to be a wholesaler. I want to do what you do. Like, I want to buy and sell cars like you do, like a lot. And he said, you don't want to do what I do. You know, he's, he's just a miserable person. And funny, like, like, that's how his attitude was. <laughs> you don't want to do it. I do. I said, give me a shot. Give me some cars and I'll sell them for you. And I'll prove myself. The reason I keep stressing <laughs> dude, because people say like, hey, I want to become a wholesaler. Give me money. And, you know, and, and I want to work for you. Like, I worked for free, dude. Like, I worked for knowledge. I said, give me cars and I'll show you what I, what I can do. He gave me two yeah. cars. I detailed them and put them behind my parents' house, and I made six thousand bucks for him in two days. Oh, and I wow. gave him all the money, <laughs> and I said, "Hey, I can do this, but I want to do it on a scale like you have." So at the time, he was doing like a hundred cars a month. 
from like mm-hmm. a 10 or 11 dealerships he was buying from. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I just uh, ended up, I ended up leaving Mercedes because my detail company blew up so big, dude. It exploded. I had no time, you know, which was good. It's a great thing when you're, when your weekend business, you know, ex- demolishes your weekly paychecks. So I just grabbed this guy by the, by the coattails and he showed me every, you know, how to do it. And I took that and took it to the next level. I went crazy with it. And that was back in 04, I think it was, 05. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And then after that, we went. So I would go in. I'd buy cars to be traded in a Nissan at a Mercedes dealership. Nowadays, they keep it because inventory is low. But back then, they don't want a Nissan. They want a Mercedes, right? Yeah. So they would call us. I'd number the car. And then I would go to the dealership, pick it up. De- you know, my guys would recon it, detail it, and we run it through the auto auction. So we were doing like 100 cars a month or so. And then, so what I started doing was I started going up, we had a scale. So I started going to all these other dealerships and walking in going, look, I appreciate the fact you have another wholesaler. I'm not going to step on anybody's toes, but I want you to remember who I am. I'll buy any car they don't want. I'll buy junk. I'll buy million dollar cars. I'll buy anything they don't want to buy. I'm Mm -hmm. here for you. And I'd like to build a relationship. And that's what I did, man. And they remember me and I would stop in all the time, say hi. And next thing you know, their wholesaler didn't want to buy a couple cars and I bought them. And then we became better friends. And next thing you know, I'm the wholesaler. 31 dealerships in four okay. years. Okay. How what was the most the car that you made the most money flipping or selling where yeah. you got it and then you sold it? You, uh yeah. You know uh, that? I, yeah, Mercedes S six. Well, there's a couple, but I'll the one I'll mention was a Mercedes S65, uh AMG. It's a high-end okay. V12. 612 horsepower, badass car. Back in the day, they came out. It was called a Dizinho model, black with white leather. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, we bought them. I stole the cars. I mean, I bought them very cheap and I made 32 grand on one car. How did you get that one cheap? Uh, it was, was just connection. Wrong with it? it was a company. No, it was a company that owned it and they didn't want it anymore and they just wanted to dump it. And right place, right time, right connections in my network. That was it. So you bought it for how much and sold it for how much? Bought it. Sticker price was two hundred and eighteen thousand dollars. Oh, okay. I bought it thirteen months old for seventy eight thousand bucks. Oh wow! (laughs) Thirty five thousand. And people are like, "How do you remember that car?" I'm like, "Because I made a lot of money." So the car was worth two hundred grand. You bought it for seventy. No, the car brand new. The car brand new. See, bro, this is back in the day. People don't realize today. You Got bought it. a car two years ago, it's still worth more than you paid for it, you know, sticker. Back yeah. then, you buy a $200,000 car, you start it and pull it off the lot, it's worth 108. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it was back in the day. Yeah, my, my car, I bought it, my Corvette, I bought it for 61000 on Kelly Blue Book. It's it's worth, I mean, I've gotten offers for fifty grand on it, but yeah. all the way, at, like, Kelly Blue Book says it's worth fifty seven, and I bought it for sixty one. It's fine. You've had it for how long? And I've had it for since 2017. So five pretty, years. Pretty damn good, right, bro? You could drive a car you for know? free. Like they always said, oh, when you drive it off the lot, it depreciates by 10 grand. And I'm looking at it like it hasn't depreciated hardly at all. I've gotten offers for 50 grand. And I have, that's from dealerships that are yeah. trying to call me. Like I got um, a quote from um, what's the main one, the CarMax CarMax. or whatever. Yeah, CarMax. Yeah, so so they gave me a cash offer of like forty eight grand, you know, like, but that's just like you can just go in and get it and and do that, you know, and that's not very much different than what I bought it for, and you know, I put twenty three thousand miles on it, not a lot of miles, but still, you know, it's like older and. Like, yeah, well, it's, and it's Corvette. I'll be honest with you, Corvettes. They're like now nowadays. And it's funny when you leave the lot before it was actually thirty five percent you would lose thirty five percent. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It's bad. It horrible. Nowadays though, like your Corvette, that's a specialty car too. It'll always hold its value. I used to tell people all the time, you lose, you leave the lot. Two years later, your car evens out. About yeah. evens out. Then you have another year or two of right around there, and then it drops again. Now, dude, Corvette. If you buy a brand new Corvette today, you make twenty five thousand bucks on it. Yeah. Just, no. If you, if you buy one of the C eights, especially yeah, the the it's new Z sixes, oh god, yeah. People are people are buying them and making you know fifty grand yeah. or a hundred grand because they can't make enough of them fast enough, and it's a specialty car, and it's so good that you know they'll buy them for a hundred something and sell it for two hundred. So well, if you think yeah. about it, that's that's the most. I mean, the C eight, the Z six. 
is smoking yeah. Ferrari, Lamborghini, Huracan, yeah. smoking them all. And yeah. for a hundred, <laughs> maybe a hundred and fifty grand, you know, loaded that car. Yeah, loaded. Is, yeah, is yeah. you're still a hundred grand to one hundred and fifty under any exotic. Yeah, anything wow. that's in the same class. You yeah, know? easily, man. So. They're smoking everything, and it's a badass looking car. Admit it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah, no, I'm a car guy too. I mean, I love driving fast and, um, you know, in Mexico, you can pretty much get away with anything here. (laughs) So, so so yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the car thing is cool. So you got into real estate as well. Well, my brother, dude, my brother, you know, he's, he's the, he's just the brains. I mean, I want to dip into, we just bought a big property up in Lake George and the flipping like, I just am fascinated with what he does. So if I never had him in my life, I wouldn't really care. Uh, I see real estate all around me, but my brother, he, what he specializes in is new construction. So mm. your house is beautiful. My house is beautiful. The one in the middle is a hoarder, you know, condemned property, making the neighborhood bad, right? Yeah. Literally buy, buy, the, buy the house, sign the paperwork, drive a bulldozer right through it. Mm. And builds a brand new house in like, 60 days sometimes yeah. 30 days it's, it's the machine it's a machine so i was just fascinated with it man and i uh i never wanted anything to do with construction wise but the real estate is just really cool you know and now and now we're doing a big project up in upstate new york where we're my fiance's got a house up there where she's doing like an airbnb which is so cool and you know we're expanding that we ended up buying 200 acres down the street where we're going to develop it you know we're going to not mm-hmm. not like not like a neighborhood but we're going to Build a couple condos, build a build a single family house or two, because wow. of the demand, you know. Yeah, so it's just really cool, like house flipping and stuff. And it, it if you have a system, like that's what my brother has taught me. When you have a system in place, it's easy. But obviously, it's not easy because you always have you know issues and, and hurdles. But when you have the system in place, it's more seamless because once once one thing happens, the next thing happens, the next thing happens. It's just a domino effect in a great way. Where a lot of these people will buy a house. And then they'll just like tear a wall down. And then eight months later, it'll be like the roof. Like you have to just do it all at once, you know, and you learn a lot. But if you want quick, that's a problem is people will keep houses forever and vacant. Where if you want to make quick money, you buy the house, you recon it, you get rid of it on the market, especially today. You know, real estate is fascinating to me, especially now being around so many real estate agents, man, the opportunity is so big that, you know, a lot of my friends have portfolios. My buddy today, my buddy Michael today, he's at 250 houses that he owns rental property, you know, and always been fascinated by it. And it's just really cool that you can take something and either recon it, make it nice. Like I used to do in the car business, right? They're my passion. Always cars, always my passion. I would buy a car that had a bumper crack dents in the side. It was filthy. I know what that thing's going to look like after I'm done with it. Right. For a little Mm -hmm. money, because I have my connections, right. I would recon it and flip Mm -hmm. it and sell it very quickly. Well, houses are the same thing. When you have an ugly house, it's an ugly color, it's an eyesore on the block, and you put it, you know, make it really nice looking and brand new, everybody wants to buy it. So that's a philosophy in the real estate thing, man. So, yeah, but it's cool. It's cool. But car, cars are my my main thing, and real estate is is because of my brother. Okay. So cars, you're buying them yeah. and selling them. Yeah. Real estate, you're buying them, fixing them up, and flipping them. Yeah. Are you using your own cash, or are you using, like, OPM or what? It depends. What yeah. yeah. It all depends. It all depends. Car business, mostly. Yeah. It was, it's me. But um, the real estate stuff, it really depends. We we have private investors where mm-hmm. they'll get a percentage on their money. You know what I mean? Yeah. OPM is cool because you don't want to buy banks. Yeah. And by, by the way, OPM is other people's, other people's money. money. Yeah. I, I would like, yeah. like to explain <laughs> is that a bank? things. Yeah. yeah other people's <laughs> money. So with other people's money, here's the coolest part. Bank, there's nothing wrong with banks. Banks are good, right? Um, yeah. Sometimes. But they're a pain in the ass to work with when you're when you're flipping for us because yeah. my brother works so quick that you literally they want like all right well let me see this the business plan the this the that we're like no just give me the money we'll be done in 60 days you know mm-hmm. that they, they obviously that's not really heard of like that but that's why other people's money you know people have money people don't realize you have a today you bought your house for three hundred thousand ten years ago i'm making this number up today mm-hmm. it's worth eight hundred thousand right yeah. You have 500 grand. Now you probably only owe 150 to 200 on it, right? You have over 500,000 in equity in your house. Now here's what's funny about people, what people have their mindset of. My house is almost paid off. No more payments. I'm like, yeah, but you got 500 grand sitting there just doing nothing where you can yeah. take that out 
at prior to today's crazy weird market, you know, you could take that out at like 2.8% interest. Yeah. Uh huh. Give it to a yeah. guy like my brother. I'm not going to mention a percentage, but make more than that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Way you more do, than that. Right. You do Invested. nothing. Yeah. You make, yeah. you do nothing. You do nothing. You give money, you get back money. Yeah. And you can take your money out whenever. So my brother would take that money, go flip a project. And sometimes not really anymore. Cause it got to be, they got too involved, but my brother would be like, do you want to see what I do? Do you want to learn about flipping a house? Like he made it fun for the investors. And some people, he still likes to do that. But mm. some people wanted to get involved and go, I want the bathroom to be purple. I want my brother's like, get the hell away. You have no say in this. You know, <laughs> so people want to actually become like, you know, on the job, you know, partners in it. He's like, no, you're, I'm just doing this as a courtesy. So, but anyway, other was money. So you get a percentage of their money. Now he has other investors come to him where, um, where we'll look at, a, they'll, they'll have a property that they say, Hey, I'm buying this property. I have all the funds. Can you guys build it? Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, of course, then they work a deal out, obviously with building and stuff like that. And then we sell the house, but yeah, but I mean, it's always smart to use other people's money. If you, if you know, why, why use your own, if the interest is good enough and uh, the turnaround's quick enough, always use other people's money, you know, if yeah. you can. but in the car 100%. business, is you know, the, the car business is good, but me, like, I, I'll give you a case in point. I bought a car. No, no joke. I bought a car over the phone at like, I don't know, 11 o'clock in the morning. And it was mm -hmm. sold by three o'clock. You know what I mean? And yeah. I never even saw it before. <laughs> I had somebody else pick it up. I use my money for that because it's easy to just wire and give and that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Just quicker. Cars, yeah. I use my own money. And real estate, it's, it's smart to use others. And because you're, you're dealing with a lot bigger nuts, you know, you're dealing, dealing with hundreds of thousands, if not a million dollars, you know? Okay, so your brother is who you learned this whole real estate Everything thing man. through. Yeah. So that so so he was your guy there because yeah. you, you talk about you know finding the best person you know in a certain thing, and then learning how to do that, and then right. go and duplicate and duplicate and and sell and create your own business. So all day. Two two questions. All right. So like, well, it's really the same question, but for both things. So how much? Well, I guess maybe it's even more than two things. How much money did you make? In the paper route thing, yeah. if you can give a number, how much money did you make doing car detailing? Yeah. How much money did you make in the car selling? Are you still making money in those things? Like total in your life, how much money did you make in each level? Yeah. And then the real estate. Like, yeah. I just want to kind of put a number on it. Like, okay, I made. So, so I'll give you numbers in the first two, but I won't give you numbers now. Just so you know. Okay. That. Uh, yeah, so yeah. in the, during the paper route, I was literally making as a 12 year kid, like 200 bucks a week, 200 bucks a week. Okay. Now back in the day, that's $800 a month, right? Yeah. And that's a lot of money, you know, as a 12 and how, year old. You're 12 years old. Okay. 12. When I was 12 years old, I was not working. That's it. You're, 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 you're <laughs> I was, I was costing my parents yeah. 4,000 a month. Yeah. And during Christmas, dude, during Christmas, <laughs> I was two, making like yeah. two grand a month. Yeah. You know, it's very so, <laughs> so you're having good how, Christmases. Oh, it's, it's just funny how that works. Because back in the day, like I said, the horses, they weren't that much money to buy, but it was yeah. when you had to take care of them. So my board was 225 a month per horse. Yeah. So I'm there paying 450 a month per horse, you know, my capital and stuff, you know. So, but then I saved it. Don't forget, I bought and sold bicycles. Like I was like the neighborhood. Uh, we used to ride our bikes around neighborhoods and stuff, all my friends. And mm -hmm. I would buy, it's so funny how, Grow up as a kid, you have no worries, right? I would yeah. buy bicycles <laughs> from kids in other neighborhoods and clean them up and sell them to kids in my neighborhoods and make like yeah. 50 bucks, 100 bucks, right? Back in the day, like the dinos, the VFRs, all the cool bikes, GT. Yeah. So GTs, that was that. Yeah. yeah. So then going mm -hmm. to, to, again, the mobile detailing, um, I, I averaged 300 hours a car and sometimes I would do a package deal or whatever, but I was jammed. I was busy every day, man. How and much then are you I making a month there, your peak? I don't, uh, I probably 150 grand a year. I would say oh, something okay. like that. Yeah. It yep. was good money. It was good money, man. For back. And again, for what I worked from, uh, I worked from March. How April, old were you then? 20, 21. Okay. Probably, you know, tw I was, I was, yeah, I was 20, 21. Just yeah, hustling 19. and networking. Dude, that, I'm telling you, that's, I, I just drill it in people's heads, man. I'm just like, look, why did I build so many clients and people still wait, ready? I'm 41 years old. Yeah. <laughs> to this day, people call me for deep my clients. Are you interested in detail my car anymore? I, my clients are 90 years old now. You know what I mean? 
Swear. Yeah. And that's why yeah. I have my detail that I give every, I give them all, all the referrals to, you know, you're building up, but yeah, yeah. that's why you have your referral guy. And then you can make a percentage and just send them over to him. I just, here's the funny thing. I'll leave him on a percentage. He <laughs> a lot of business. And we'll talk about that with the referral, how to build a network. But like, yeah. I literally give him so much business that I don't want you scratch my bag. I'll scratch yours, but I love it because he understands the gig. He yeah. understands it. And he's referred mm-hmm. me to so many freaking people, man. I can't even thank him enough, you know? So it's like yeah. your job to do that. But yeah, it's funny how that works. But yeah, man. And then again, the car business was was very good. I can tell you, I just say the car business was amazing. And it still is. Like I have my license. I don't really, I don't, I don't own a CarMax. I have mm-hmm. a warehouse with a license that I buy and sell cars for my friends and network and that kind of stuff. I don't want to do it full time. I don't want anything to do with it full time. But cars come to me every day. Every day I buy cars. Not yeah. every day. Like every, you know, a lot of times a month. But they come to me and I make the decision whether I want to buy them or not. So here's the cool part. Ready? Another success. Yeah. Tip. I built mm-hmm. a big enough network that I get calls all the time. And if it doesn't make sense for me, I go, I can't help you. Sorry. You know what? Let me yeah. refer you to somebody else and maybe they can pay up for it. Yeah. I am not buying a car today unless I make money on it. That's yeah. a rule. Why? I don't have to. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And that's it. And like my brother said, with the real estate, there's no house to buy unless the formula works. <laughs> if, we t- if we take the the buying of it with the material with the cost if the time is this and it doesn't equal this or greater it's mm-hmm. a no i remember we walked away from a deal literally we went and looked at the at the lot money ready to buy the house it was on the market forever again prior to this whole craziness and over five thousand bucks we said this is the deal that's it and the guy goes nope i said we're, we're gonna walk away right now and not turn around he goes nope well you're not getting it i said nice meeting you he would call my brother for days and my brother's like, Nope, I don't want it. I don't want to keep it. Keep your five grand. <laughs> you know, but yeah. Yeah. But that is it's good. Yeah. So eventually I'm gonna have you hunt for a Z06 in like a couple of years, one that's kind of used up, like not used, but like a little slightly used. And I know you'll be able to find it because you're the oh, man. I'll get you whatever you want, man. I got the connections for the for the cheapies up to the the big dogs, man. Whatever you want. I, I can again, I just and if I can't get it, like myself, if I don't want to, if I don't have time to run out and whatever, like I f- I'll have fun doing that with you. But I'll literally pick up the phone and I'll say, I need a Z06. <laughs> and I'll have yeah. something for you the next day. You know, yeah, yeah. I like doing that yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. So what about in real estate? How much, what, what were you doing there? Like, was that more money than the cars and the paper route? You know, it depends. <laughs> Actually, I'm not going to answer that. Um, but it, it's very good. I can tell you, it's very good. But I, But here's the funny part. Some houses, though, like back in the day, you do all this work, you'd have a little bit of a glitch and you break even yeah. when you get rid of the real estate, when you get rid of a house. Right. But with but with the market today. But here's the funniest part, though. Back in the day, you know, the houses would get built for like, you know, 200 grand and sell for making numbers up for 289. No problem. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, now that same exact house is selling for 450 to 500. And everybody thinks, wow, you're making an extra $250,000. No, it's because that lumber costs $400,000. And it's like making less money with the market today. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. that's yeah. just how it is. But yeah, but I mean, no, it, it's it's really funny how you uh, how you put things into perspective with the building materials and what they are now today. You never would have thought this. You, I never thought that cars, cars I'm buying today, still making money. For more than they were brand new three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? Like, if you yeah. bought a car and it was 25 grand three years ago, I might pay 25 five for that car today and sell it for 28. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, that I always learned that cars depreciate. And then, uh, like, the last couple of years, it's like they're just appreciating now. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. But I'll tell you what, I'll be honest with you right now, and it's, it's good, it's great. I'm not, I never say, oh, the fun days are over because everything's still, it depends on how you market yourself, it depends whatever. But I will tell you this, I, I have a lot of new car friends and they are saying that like they're seeing a lot of kind of like before if your car was worth $30,000 wholesale, it's now worth like 24, you know, mm-hmm. like, but it's still more than you freaking could have ever imagined, you know what it's yeah, worth. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. It, it's it's just with the market now. But I think now, I was with 280 real estate agents today in a big um, networking event. And they're even saying it's still great for the hustlers, 
But some people are even saying like, just the demand, it's just weird. It's like a vibe. It's really weird now where there's not 17,000 people at the open house anymore. You know, it's, yeah. but you know, you just got to hustle. Okay. So talk networking, network marketing. How did oh, you get into that? And how did that go? So I told you about my detail mentor. I told mm-hmm. you about my automotive mentor. I told you about my brother in real estate mentor, right? Well, now let's get into mm-hmm. network marketing. So 2010, I'm buying and selling 500 cars a month, killing mm-hmm. it, killing it, working seven days a week. My brother, Chris, same guy, Chris, calls me and says, hey, I met a guy at a BNI networking group that said that um, we can make money on electricity bills in Pennsylvania. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't get, I don't care about anything you're talking about right now. I don't care about that guy. I don't care whatever. He said, no, it's about to get deregulated. I'm not going to get into details. Who cares? But I'm like, no, no, no. He's my big brother. I trust him. I love him. I, we do anything for each other. So I went and met this guy and he was cool, but I just wasn't interested, man. I have no time to do. I have no time, time manager, right? I had none. Mm-hmm. This guy, I was 29 at the time. He was 30 and very nice guy from Texas. Right. And I just started talking to him. First of all, he's wearing cowboy boots in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. which is funny, but now, now, everybody, <laughs> now cowboy boots are like the cowboy hell. boots, cowboy boots in Pennsylvania, man, which I came up. <laughs> Why are you wearing them? But anyway, now everybody wears cowboy boots in Pennsylvania. So he uh, he just said, yeah, I had some success and all this kind of stuff. And he said, um, you know, I make a lot of money doing this. And obviously I asked him, I'm going to tell you what he made. He made a lot of money. And uh, I just said, all right, that's cool. And he's, I was like, well, i am got to go back to the car business. And there was three things that happened uh, in instances in my life of, you know, business, personal, that kind of stuff. And I just said, you know what? And my brother kept calling me. I said, let me take a shot at this. I'll try it out. And I wanted, I was really getting burned out in the car business. So I wanted a, a way out to get some freedom. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And residual, not just network marketing, any kind of residual income can give you time freedom if you build it good enough. So ready? Again, Jess, I found this kid's name's Ryan. Mm-hmm. He said, all right, listen, I'm interested. I need you to show me how you became successful. <laughs> yeah. Now that kid, I call him a kid. He's a year old me. Yeah. Was it 2010? So 12 years later, we're best friends. Mm-hmm. We, grew, we grew our businesses together. We're growing our daughters together. And it's just so cool. And he's a son too, but it's just so cool to meet somebody in a networking event. I was the best man at his wedding in New Orleans. Like we just, it's just so cool how that works. Oh, wow. But he just showed me, man. He just showed me again. This is the funny thing is when people get mentors, they show them what to do or what they did. Do that, but do it times 10 and you'll be yeah. that much more successful. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my network marketing story goes, I got involved. I had some success because my brother and I have a monster network in Pennsylvania and I never mm-hmm. knew what I was doing. Everything people were like, well, what, what do I do? I went, I have no idea. Talk to that guy, Ryan. I have no idea what I'm doing. All I know mm-hmm. is this. He makes residual income. I think this is going to be really good. And my brother told me to do it. Are you mm-hmm. in or are you out? You know? Yeah. <laughs> so we would pack hotel rooms. We'd have 400 people at the local Sheridan and I mm-hmm. we blew up pretty quick. And then, I needed to set a goal in my life. I wanted like, I needed, I needed something to go after, not just like empty open success. I wanted some, a deadline. Right. So I'm mm-hmm. local in Pennsylvania near Philadelphia here. And the owner came in on his plane is a uh, you know, private plane, whatever. And there was 1200 people in the room. And I stood up and I said, my name's James Levins. I said, I want to challenge you now to get to the top of the compensation plan. The top in the company and the whole company takes an average of three to five years. That's mm-hmm. the time span. I'm in the business five months. Yeah. <laughs> seven, months, seven months. And I go, I'm going to hit the, I'm going to do it. Like I'm hitting this level and I'm going to do it. Not, not like if, or I said, I'm going to do it. Like no matter what. Yeah. yeah. When I do this, remember confidence, right? When I do this, will you come pick me and my family up on your airplane and take us to Atlantic city for dinner? Yeah. And the whole place went nuts. He went, you really think you're going to do it? I said, I know I am. We went back and forth and he challenged me. He said, done. So now that was like the challenge heard around the world and the guy's never lost in his life at a bet. Hmm. So bro, I literally put my head down and I got with my mentor and I just got blood, sweat and tears and drive and dedication, man. And I freaking exploded. Like I just went nuts. And, and what, what were you doing? I mean, you were inviting, like, tell me yeah. your system. How did yeah. you get people introduced, get yep. to a hotel? Yeah. Like, so hotels were doing? once a week, twice a week. I didn't have time for that because I only had uh, I had six weeks or eight weeks, whatever it was. And I needed X mm-hmm. amount of people and customers and stuff. So I would call my entire team, who most of them quit anyway, which is funny. People do all the time. And then <laughs> yeah. I would call my entire network. And I said, look, 
I don't care if you like it. I don't care if you do it. All I care is if you see it. What time is good for you? One, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. Because I'm doing hour increments here because I don't have time. And they said, uh, you know, five. Jesse, when I would come to your house or that coffee shop I'd meet you at, you were already signed up on my team. You were already successful with me. And we were already planning a, a, a success vacation together in my mind. Uh-huh. You have no uh-huh. idea what I'm about to tell <laughs> In your mind. In my mind. So I'd walk in. And you know what I did? I'd show them the opportunity. And some people were like, yeah, it's pretty cool. But here's what I would do. You see these two things in your head called ears? Yeah. I became a professional listener where I'm like, so Jess, what do you do for a living? Well, man, you know, I work in the car business. I work seven days a week. I have kids. I don't ever see them, though, because I'm working so much. I hate my life. You know, like you, people will tell me all this <laughs> stuff, right? And I just sit there and go like this, like this, like this, smile. Okay, okay. Show you my opportunity video. And afterwards, mm-hmm. I go, what do you think, Jesse? You go, you know, I don't really think I want to do this. I don't have time. Yeah. Jesse, I appreciate that so much. Remember these words? Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that, Jess. Let me ask you a question. And I'm not going to beg you to do this. I don't want I don't want to beg people to make money with me. But I do want to ask you this. If your life looks like that today, where you're working seven days a week, you have kids you never see, you're going to see them in college when they're at their soccer game and they're growing old. And, you know, you, you go in, you kiss your wife goodnight, you wake up, you kiss her goodbye, like that's it. I said, if that's what your life looks like today, what's it going to look like next year if you don't have any kind of change in your life at all? Mm. I'm not saying I'm it. But take a shot once in a while. Take an opportunity. Take a risk once in a while. It might just work. Yeah, and I, I, wasn't like bull- I wasn't bullshitting these people. It was for real. Like me. Yeah. <laughs> I was describing me. Like I don't yeah, think they, they joined. It would be, you know, that, that was painting the picture of the excitement of it. You painted the picture for him, man. And again, I kept telling him, like, look, even not me, go, go do something else that you like, a passion, whatever. But they appreciate it. And I, my word was everything to them. Like I'd say, look, I'm not going to do it for you, but I'll be there with you every step of the way. And mm. people, people rocked at me, man. And I just crushed it. And I just kept going. And then, wait, greatest part of the world. This I forgot, I forgot. I did a podcast yesterday. I forgot to talk about this. Imagine being in electricity, in the electricity business, okay? Trying mm. to get people to switch their electric bills with you to do, you know, yeah. save money, that kind of stuff. And then we have a hurricane and lose power for eight days. Oh, Try wow. messing with somebody's electric bill when they don't have power. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just another hurdle, dude. I didn't care. I was doing... And ask my mentor, Ryan Mars, I was doing um, meetings with candlelight with iPads at people's houses. <laughs> I had pictures of everything to prove it. It's crazy because people didn't believe it. But I would tell my story, and uh, let me finish it real quick. So I ended up, <laughs> half my team quit on me. Half the team quit on me. So I built it myself. Oh, my okay. Gosh. And then yeah. fast forward, I ended up winning. I, I I promoted on September 1st, 2011 at 134 in the morning. I remember it was yesterday. And I didn't have to promote till the following day, but I did it a day early. Mm-hmm. And my name got, you know, I was, and again, I'm not saying look at me, anybody. I'm just telling you what happened in my life. And I, there was 350,000 people in the company. The average is three to five years. I did it in nine months. I have the fastest in company history record. I shattered every record that's ever been set in the company. Became a top income earner my first year and exploded since then. And the reason I did it was because I bet the owner in front of a company or in front of the bit, the whole room. And I just said, I need a goal. And I didn't freaking quit. That's it. Like I didn't, yeah. everything pun. If, if the only thing that was left to end me was like, have you ever seen the cartoons where the anvil dro- the drops on their heads and crushes them? Yeah. And they're just the pan- 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 yeah. yeah. It's only <laughs> not me, man. Every other hurdle hit me in the face. But okay, I when you're when you're walking into a grocery store and you're just walking, do you talk to everybody there? Do you just walk by them and so, with your head down like this? No, like no, most no. people are like, if you do that, like, hey, how's the, how's your day going? Like, are you like just talking to everybody you meet? You said it, man. Like if I'm sitting there looking at you know apples and you're looking at apples, I'm like, what do you think? Did a soft ones mean anything? What do you do for a living? Yeah. That, you, know, you I, do I, that every, no matter what, all the time. All the time. Nowadays, it depends if I'm in Russia. Now I have a three-year-old, and you know, if, if I if I'm in there, I don't want to talk to anybody because I want to get out of there before she freaks out. Or talk whatever. to an old lady. I'll talk to anybody, man. I'll talk to an old lady. Because <laughs> again, back when I was building my network marketing business, yeah. I literally was. Everybody was an opportunity of not to make money on them. It was an opportunity. For, the best partners in my life of network marketing, I never knew before before the company. I never knew. Yeah. My buddy, John Costin, I travel with him. We, we go, we're going away together again in two weeks. I travel with him everywhere. And I never knew him before my network marketing company. I met the greatest people in the world in that company, man, because 
it's all positive, like-minded people that want to become successful, you know? And, and yeah. I, met, I met my best friend, Ryan, I met him because of the company. So when I talk to people, like I'll be out and I'll just, I don't, I don't sit there and break conversation, you know, just to try to sell you. What I do is I go, if you're fit for like, or what I want to do, like a company wise, we can make money together. Yeah, I'll pursue it. But I'm just a nice dude. When I'm in the store, I go, Hey, how you doing? Like most yeah. people are like staring at you. Like they want to rip your throat out. You know, that's yeah. the world today. Cause world sucks. <laughs> Everybody's so freaking miserable. But I walk around and I go, how are you? Like today or yesterday I left a real estate office. I did a seminar at a real estate office. I went in and I was in a rush. I grabbed a quick slice of pizza. True story. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget what it's called. I'm going to actually find out what the name of it is. It was awesome pizza in Jersey. There was a young girl there. She's probably 18 years old, right? And she's sitting there and she's like, hi, how are you today? I said, I'm great. Thank you. She's like, I'm so happy to hear that. What can I do to make your day better? I'm like, holy shit. Where did you come from? I, I really said that. I went, I said, you are like, that's amazing. She's like, thank you. I said, what do you do? I said, you, you run this place? She's like, no, I'm a college student. I come here and all ready for this. You want to know she's a genius? Yeah, right. On the counter, it says tips for college fund. <laughs> oh, is that what she was? Yeah, I said, here's a 20. Yeah. Said, oh, God, thank you. I said, no, you did it yourself. You're a genius. Yeah. But anyway, look what that story was. I talk, like, she's happy. I talk to her and I just appreciate the fact that she's positive. If I'm in a grocery store building a business, that, that person behind me could own a real estate office. They could own a dog grooming company. They could own a company where I could give my product to and give them value. And sell my product mm. to them. So to answer your question, that 90 minute tutorial there, I talk to freaking everybody, bro. Everybody. <laughs> yeah, no, you're I, I can tell you you tell a lot of stories, but I can tell you one thing. The best story I've heard this entire year was the fact that you're selling electricity to people that have no electricity at the time, and you're using candlelight with to, iPads with iPads to sell them the electricity, and that still didn't stop you. And you still went to the top of your company in the record time. Record time, nine months, never been done before, ever. Yeah, I mean, that that's an incredible story. You need to make a movie about that. And you know what's cool about that? At least like a nice, you know, social media piece that's freaking amazing. And you know what's cool about that too, man? That set me up for success in the future because again, not to sound like a a, cocky whatever, but here's the cool part. Mm. I killed myself to get that title Mm-hmm. And now it's, I use that to my advantage when I was out recruiting people that wanted, I said, yeah, I said, I have a little bit of success. I said, I, I shattered every record. I'm the fastest in company history at the top, you know, and, and I'm a top income earner. That's, that's like somebody you want to go find and, and, and work with because they've already done it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that again, success tip for you, go find something and crush it in it, gain a little bit of credibility and that is your platform to go out and, and become more successful. It's your value right there, right? So find somebody that did it. I blew away my buddy, which is awesome, which is the best part in the world, you know? And by the way, mm-hmm. people think that network marketing is a pyramid scam, all that kind of crap. Guess what? There was 350,000 people when I started. I became a top income earner my first year and blew all the other people away, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I ruined the, the pyramid. I ruined the whole thing, you know? But it's not... Yeah. It's, it's called life. It's called, you know, it's called success, right? Network marketing. But I recommend anybody who's looking to build a network. I don't care what company you're doing, go join a company because you'll have a network of people ready to rock with you in anything, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the info now. You got this product. I used it with you right when we first talked. Yep, and love it. can you can you explain that yeah. process and and what you can use the info for and what it's how it helps you network and yeah. And build your business. I'll explain it in two words: bad ass. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, you know, info. I tell it. Info is a one-stop shop. Info is it's a next-level business tool. Now, you're going to hear me say business card and stuff because I want to keep it simple for everybody. I hate the word business card anymore because I'm not. I'm, I'm not a digital business card. I am a next-level business tool to help you crush success and get exposure and all that kind of stuff in business. But to keep it simple. Imagine this, everything you offer for your clients, like everything you offer, name, phone number, email, website, links to anything, social media, all this stuff and referral networks, which we'll end with, mm-hmm. at the click of a button in one place, click of a button. It's not an app. There's no downloading, no taking up room on your phone, none of that stuff. It's a web app. It's saved with a favorite customized icon that takes up no room on the phone. 
And it works on any device. It works on a computer, an Android, an iPhone, an iPad, an, I, an iPod, if you have internet, anything it works on. And my favorite part about it, actually I have a lot of favorites, but it's very easily shareable. This is the difference between in phone and everything else. When I, again, we'll go back to the business card word. If mm-hmm. Jesse and I network today and he says, mm-hmm. hey man, you sell cars for a living? Great, do you have a business card? I'll give Jesse my business card normally, right? Jesse goes to a couple of his buddies and goes, hey, I met James. You got to go sell your car to him or buy. He's awesome. Jesse only has one business card. Now he's going to have to look down, either take a picture of it and send it, or he's going to have to write my phone number, whatever. It's extra step. Within phone, I give it to Jesse because he's my client or my buddy or my network and whatever he's did. Well, now Jesse has my in phone on his phone. He can literally share it with 20,000 people without Mm. ever doing anything difficult. Right. And that's where the success comes from. I have people all day long that say, James, because of info, I handed it out to so-and-so who handed out to so-and-so third party, Kevin Bacon game down the road, you know, six degrees of Kevin Bacon down the road. (laughs) Somebody calls me and goes, I got your name from this person. And you have no, I have no idea who they are. Right. I want to buy this, or I want to do a service with that person. It's just so cool how the success stories come, but info, is a web app. So everything you have, the click of a button. We also, like we're on uh, StreamYard right now and we're talking, right? Mm-hmm. Well, we have to have, um, or you have you have a set up as, as an app and a link, whatever here, right? Well, imagine yep. this, you have Zoom, you have whatever. Well, if you're on your phone, right? And I want to FaceTime you, like Jesse, I know you have an iPhone. So we're iPhone users. So Jesse could be anywhere mm-hmm. in the world. As long as we have internet presence, I can FaceTime mm-hmm. with Jesse. Well, if he has an Android, we can't. You have Mm -hmm. to download something called Duo, or we have to download a WhatsApp, or maybe become friends on Facebook with Messenger. There's that extra step that we have to do that some people might not want to do. It might be a hassle. So what I do, what we do with info is I would send you my info link, okay? One click, send it to Jesse. You would click video chat, Jesse. I would Mm -hmm. click video chat. On my yep. business card, my info, and I would send him. Same. So he's, he has my can info. Can you do it right now, or is it too hard yeah. to do? Can, can we, we do send it? it? We can show like the people. Yeah, right Actually, that's a great idea. Yeah, because um, when you did it with me before, I remember we were like talking, and it's like it's kind of hard to understand. And then you're like, "Dude, I'll just send you my link," and then it was crystal clear. Yeah. And then I could see you, and it was like better than internet or whatever. Yeah. Is it? It's on the internet, or it's yeah, like its yeah. own. Yeah, it's all I, I said. Actually, we talked on cloud calls since they can't they can't really see us. I'm gonna send you my cloud call thing here. Watch your watch. Um, here, watch this, Jesse. Okay. All right, so watch this. You ready? Okay. okay, so he texted me the link. Yep. So now I'm clicking on it. So now I'm clicking. Jesse's clicking. There he said, hit allow. You gotta turn around, hit allow. Now watch this. What's up, bro? Hey, what's up? How's it going? <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna hang up. So literally, and we can do video too, but we're, we're on here. So literally, yeah. I just sent Jesse my link to my to my info link here. All he did was press connect. That was it. Yeah. He pressed connect, and within two seconds, him and I were were talking on the phone. That's called cloud call. It's one of our one of our features. Video chat's the same thing. It's really cool how it works. But that's the difference between us and a digital business card is we have features on it that nobody else has. Now, my, my another f- feature I want to talk about. Is secure chat like let's say you're um, an entrepreneur or a business person that does not want to give out your personal information to anybody? Okay, yeah, there is right there. Thanks, bud. It's same as on my screeners. So that's my info. So let's yeah. say you don't want to give your information <laughs> out, your personal stuff. If Jesse, you don't have to do it, Jess, but if Jesse wanted to get a hold of me, I have a text me or text. It's called secure chat. Text me tab on my info. He would hit it. I would receive a text message. But he would open up a chat box. A chat box would open up on Jesse's phone. And we're texting back and forth. But the greatest part is he doesn't have my phone number. So that's Mm -hmm. a really cool feature too. And at the end of our conversation through text, I receive an email with the entire thread of what we talked about. So that's a really cool feature too. Video chat is my personal favorite one. Like I use that every day. On my computer, I can sit there and go, Jesse, we're going to talk from my in-phone today. And I'll send you my link and I'll be on my computer talking. And that's amazing features, but the absolute home run of info is your referral network. Now, remember the saying, I live by it, I breathe it. Your network is your net worth. I don't care what anybody says, it's yeah. true. <laughs> if you ask me 
for an auto detailer, a skincare specialist, a contractor, a roofer, uh, you know, a, a tattoo artist. I don't care who you ask me for. I've built a network where I can say, Jesse, I have the best. Now, here's the deal. I've dug through the dirt to find my diamonds. I say that because I've used a lot of vendors and a lot of referral partners that just made me look bad. Remember this. Remember this part. If you refer somebody and recommend somebody, it's not on them. It's on you if they screw up. So remember mm-hmm. that. Okay. Not so bad. I made my referral list the best. They're diamonds. They're grade A material. So if Jesse said, James, can you recommend an auto detailer? I'd say, yeah, no problem. Here's my buddy's cell phone number. Call him before info. Now, if Jesse says, James, can you recommend a good auto detailer? I go, absolutely. Go to my info that you already have. Click mm-hmm. referral network. Okay. And when you click referral network on the bottom right, in alphabetical order by industry, my entire referral network comes up on the screen. So, Jesse, yeah, you can look at it. My entire referral network. There it is right there. Perfect. So, Jesse, zoom in on it for me just so you can see some tabs. So, if you zoom in on it, there you go. Now, put it up to the camera there. There you go. Over. Um, there you go. Put it a little bit. There you go. Cool. So, right there, my insurance agent, a janitorial service. And, again, there's 50 or so on there. So, if you want any kind of service, personal trainer, uh, microblading, you know, my fiance is microblading, all that stuff. So if you need any of those people, you literally click it and it brings up their in phone and all of their information. So just yacht you know, sales, yacht sales, click on it. I want to buy a yacht. I live in Cabo. There he is. My boy's got the best Sandy hook. He's my buddy. And that's the coolest part ever because his name's Sandy hook. No, that's his, that's the name of his company. Yeah. He's oh. the name <laughs> but that's the coolest part of this is because I didn't do any extra work like sending Jesse my, you know, my information, cell phone numbers like that, my people. I literally just said, go to my info and click referral network. So imagine this. I gave Jesse my info just now. I also gave him 50 other business cards at the same time. Okay. 50 other business cards. So it's just amazing how that works. There it is. There's all the else. Yeah. You should buy that one, dude. All that money you got. That's a genius. Yeah. They sell sabers. They're badass boats. Inquire for the price. Yeah. You know what that means? It's expensive. Those boats are like 3 million bucks, I think. 2 million bucks. Yeah. They look like. Yeah. They're expensive. They're pilot houses or whatever, mega yachts, whatever. But info is just cool, man. Today, I was very blessed. I was invited to a real estate office. And uh, yeah, that's a cool ass boat. And there were, there were literally, and I cool? So there was literally like 200 and something agents there. And when they left today, over 150 agents had my picture on the home screen of their cell phone. Hmm. So just imagine exposure when you're when you're looking to do business. That's the coolest part ever is exposure, right? There he is. James Levy. Thanks, buddy. See, I'm on Jesse's home screen right there, my picture. So I tell people all the time, I go, my face is on over 10,000 home screens today in the past couple of years. Imagine your face being on 1,000 or 200 home screens. You might get a phone call. You might get five. You might get 10,000. My one guy in California, in uh, San Jose, his name's Steve, his in phone has been opened in the past 23, or I'm sorry, the past 12 months, 23,000 times. That means that somebody said, call my buddy Steve. They clicked it and opened it. Okay. Now, did he have 23,000 sales? Of course not. But he had a couple sales out of that. I can guarantee that one, you know, but I never got to anything like But it's just cool that you can have that from a digital business card. And we're global, we're, we're worldwide, and we're any industry in the world. It's for anybody. So that's the cool part about info. And we're very yeah. inexpensive too, you know? Yeah, so go to infonesignup.com, get your info. So what's the process? They go there and they Person. sign up. What yep, happens? They figured out if you want info, great. If you want info with video chat, just click the, the little tab that says I want video chat. If you want the secure chat I talked about, click that too. There's three options there. Once you click the option, you just pay for it. It takes like three minutes, if that. And then there it is right there. Thanks, bro. So scroll up. God, you're good. So scroll up a little bit. You'll just see all the oh. packages that we have there. Oh, and like then, this? yeah, go down a little bit. Yep. Keep going down, down here. Okay. So, yep. You pick it up. And we also have uh, You know what I'll do? I'll uh, make it a little bit easier for them to see the whole thing, maybe. Cool. I don't know. That's yeah, good. So we have a couple different packages. The incognito means like school teachers use this. You want to be totally off the grid. You don't want anybody to have your cell phone number, nothing, text messages, email, no, nothing. So incognito is you get a private phone number, like a Google voice kind of number. You get our secure chat, our video chat, all that kind of stuff. Um, the main one, I'll be honest with you guys, the main one we sell is the executive, the 249. 
that video chat is out of this world. I promise you, it's awesome. And if you don't want to give out your personal phone number, the elite's amazing too, you know? So literally, Jess, all they would do is just click. So just click one. Buy now at the bottom there. Click it. And then you scroll up. You fill out your information right there. You'll click video chat at the bottom there. It'll say 249. You have, you have to select executive like, yep. again. Yep. But select. you put your, all your information in, card That's number. It. And then you hit, you, hit, you hit just sign up. Now, after you okay. sign up there, you have two options. Number one, you can fill out all your information there, like your website, your social media stuff. But if you don't have time, one of our team members will call you within 24 hours to set it up for you. Oh, so okay. we make it easy, man. You know it's cool, man. How long does it take to get your info completely set up? I say up to 48 business hours. Um, it's most of the time a lot quicker than that, but I'd rather be early than late. You know, if that makes okay. sense. Do you so, need to get, do you have to fill out a form, like all your contacts and all yeah. that stuff to yeah, put so on their now, websites? And, yeah. Like I said, after you pay for it immediately, yeah. you get a thing that pops up that says you can fill out all your stuff right now. Okay. The cool. whole process from start to finish takes less than 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. And then what happens is our internal team gets it. And then who's ever open in the shoot. And at the moment they create their, they create the info and then we'll send it to you. So um, the cool part is you'll get it back. And you can tweak it. It's unlimited edits. It's unlimited everything. So you can hand it out. There's some testimonials from. There's my auto detail on the top left. But uh, there's unlimited edits. There's there's no sign up fee. No BS. It's I want value for our clients. That's what I want. That's the number one rule I have is we must add value to the clients, and we do that. And the cool mm -hmm. part is with Infone too. It's you're not going to get some company that just says here sign up and never talk to us again. Like we're and every Tuesday night, Jess, when we do, or every other every other Tuesday, I believe. Um, we have a community come together. So let's say you're a real estate agent in New Jersey and I have a mortgage broker in Pennsylvania that bought an info. Mm -hmm. every, every other Tuesday or so, we bring all these people together on a Zoom and we tell you how to you know, use, in, um, use your info to the next level. But my favorite part is I go, Jesse, you got to meet this guy. You got to meet this girl. You guys should do business together. We have mm -hmm. countless success stories on because of info, the common denominator, they created a ton of business together. So I want to make it a community too, you know, not just a buy an info and go away. I yeah. want to make it a product that you're going to use, help succeed your help succeed in business, and also build a referral network as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so you're using it to get all of your referral network in like in one place, so you can give it to somebody, and then they can access your referral network and think about you at all times. So then they can refer people to you also. You got like, it, brother. They're, they're getting referrals from you, but because they're given, like they have your referral network there and you're on the, their home screen. Yeah. Then now they're automatically referring business to you. Exactly. So, so you got business coming in all the time. It's better than a Facebook post or a Facebook ad, right? So you don't have to do anything. What, what you just said was a hot, like now, you call me and go, hey, man, you got an auto detailer? Yeah, of course. Here, I give you a cell phone number. Nothing between you. If I'm an a real estate agent, right? Mm -hmm. You don't remember I'm a real estate agent, which I'm not, by the way. We don't remember mm -hmm. that. But if I say, Jess, go to my in phone that you have, mm -hmm. you'll open it up and see, bam, James Levin's real estate agent. Oh, and by the way, there's my referral network. So yeah. it's always <laughs> going to have you as first priority to remember. And oh, by the way, go to my referral network and tell them I sent you. So, Jess, you're right. So people are going, oh, my God, that reminds me, James, I have a client that I want you to talk to. I want to buy or sell a house or something, whatever industry you're in. But that's the cool part of info is it, it makes your presence known and remembered is what it is. Yeah, it's amazing. Later. Yeah, man. So so who are the, the main clients for you guys right now? Who's buying this? So honestly, what it's types funny. of people? The funny thing is every, everybody, man. And I say that info, the, the greatest part of info is anybody can have it. The worst part is anybody can have it. So when people say, what's a good referral for you? I go, anybody, like anybody that if you have a, I'll, I'll, I'll zone it in. If you have a business card right now, throw it in the garbage and call me yeah. because it's going to end up <laughs> in the garbage anyway. Okay. okay. So, uh, speaking of business cards, how much do they cost? Like, yeah, fifty dollars, and then you need to redo them over and over and over again. So do, this is cheaper, right? When I do my set. Yeah. So there's a couple things with business cards, right? They're paper. So mm -hmm. number one, if if you spend fifty to seventy five bucks on business cards a, a year, you are probably not doing a lot of business. And yeah. why do I say that? Am I sound like a jerk saying that? When I go do my my seminars at car dealerships, I say if you're not handing out three to four hundred business cards a month, who the hell knows who you are? That's yeah. it. And <laughs> yeah. nine out of 10 of those paper business cards end up in the garbage or in the dryer because they're in their yeah. pants still, right? 
So that's number one rule. And business cards too. Let's say you're at a company and you get a management position or you change your email address. What do you got to do with those business cards? Throw them in the garbage and buy new ones, right? Yeah. <laughs> Within phone, you just call us, or I'm sorry, you communicate with us. We have we have a contact stuff, and you say, "Can you update my email address?" I do it in 30 seconds, or my team does it, and literally all those people you ever gave your info to in the past two years have the updated email address now in one second. Yeah, yeah. So that's the difference, bro. Is yeah, because when you give somebody, I remember I, I would always print out business cards, and then my email would change or phone number or whatever it was. We're using a one eight hundred number, or we're using this, or let's change our 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 business name, or just everything would change within like six months, especially when you're a startup, right? So yep. with this, you don't have to worry about that, and you do a run of business cards of five hundred. And they don't even have the right information on them, and you're like writing on them, and it, you know, All or you time. have to do another, or you have to do another run, yeah. And then that's another eighty bucks or hundred bucks or whatever. Yeah. So th- this is actually way cheaper, right? And then so imagine this nine for the year. And then imagine this today alone again, two hundred plus agents, right? I always mm-hmm. ask this, Jesse, do you have a business card? And everybody does the same thing; they hit their chest. <laughs> oh, I, I don't, I don't. Oh, I hit my pockets, right? Oh, yeah. I don't have one. Well, you need yeah. me because how I was on my wave runner. Okay. Remember mm-hmm. this. I'm on my wave runner on the water on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. I met a guy. All the boats are tied up. I pulled up to my buddy's got a big cigarette boat. The mm-hmm. next guy next to him had a bigger cigarette boat. Guy owns an HVAC company, mega guy, very wealthy guy. Mm-hmm. I get on his boat. We're just BSing. He's like, what do you do? I said, I pulled out my phone because I always have my phone. You always have your phone on you. Mm-hmm. But on the Sunday on my wave runner, I probably would not have had a paper business card on me. Yeah. <laughs> goes, what do you do? I said, I'll show you. I ended up selling him 40 in phones that week. Oh, really? <laughs> because I had, I showed it. I said, hey, man, we're on a boat right now, drinking a beer, just talking you know, about life. Here's my information. Click. Yeah. And he, he scanned it and put it on his home screen. He's like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I said, yeah. I know. And you're going to buy a bunch of them. And he did. <laughs> and he did. He bought 40 of them for his, for his team, for his sales team and stuff. It's just, it's, it's, just, and again, of course I'm being biased because I'm a partner in the company, but at the end of the day, it's like the reason somebody asked me today, my buddy Tony said, why, like, what gets you so excited about this? I said, I bring value to people with my tool, like with the tool I bring. It, it's not like I'm going to sell you some, you know, dream weight loss shake. That's going to make you, you know, have a, a six pack abs in three minutes. If you take the shake and you do the workout, you're going to get it. With this, I know for a fact that if you take this and, you know, we make it for you and you take it and you use it a little bit, it will be value to you. It will bring value to your company. So that's why I get so excited about it. And for what it costs, I could charge a thousand bucks for this. Some Mm -hmm. people won't be able to afford it, but I know I can. I don't though. Mm -hmm. I want everybody to have it. I want the world to have it. So that's why we kept it so cheap. Yeah, absolutely. So go to infonesignup.com. Make sure you get James's product. Yeah. He's a partner in the company. He is the man. We're actually doing a launch together. It's going to be amazing. We're going to start launching his funnel. Yep. And we're going to be doing some big things, partnering up together. So support James, support the launch, support yourself, your business, and, and get your network going. And stop doing this. Yeah, stop banging your chest. And I will say yeah. this before you log off here, man. I will say this. Everything happens for a reason. I met a girl named Gail 15 years ago in the car business. Haven't talked to her in years. She introduces me to Jesse. I've never met Jesse in my life. The second we connected on a call, we were like brothers from another mother. I love it. I felt it. Jesse (laughs) is crushing it. He's already had a crazy successful past. I know what he's going to do in the future. And I love the fact that I'm a part of it with him and, and we're networking together and helping each other build businesses. But just remember that, you know, go out there. You never know who's going to come in your life. Literally, I didn't know Jesse from from before we met, obviously, recently, but not recently, like a little while ago. And who knew? Who knew that we'd be on a stream yard right now, podcast doing this, ready to launch my funnel. And it helps. He's already become successful, man. Life is freaking awesome. So. Stay positive and be open minded and go meet some cool ass people like Jesse. So, yeah. And just just a quick question. James, how do you get all this energy? Uh, dude, I, I have no freaking idea, bro. It's just in me. I'm excited about like life. talking. It's not uh, J- it's- James is like very personable guy. When I first met him, I mean, it was so easy to talk to him. I felt like, you know, I already knew him forever. And that's probably how a lot of people, he's just very natural and very relaxed, but he's excited. And, and one of the best people that I've 
best salespeople that I've known, Jean Kim, when I was working at homes.com, she was like the manager of my department. And she, she always said confident, relaxed, excited, confident, relaxed, excited. Cause when you get excited, you're like almost tense and you're not relaxed. So <laughs> if you can be like relaxed, but excited, see right now I'm not relaxed. I'm like, ah, but James yeah. is like all three of those confident, relaxed, and excited. And you can tell cause there's people saying stuff like, like loving this James is a natural. We can't see the, it's just, you know, StreamYard kind of blocks some of the people what they're saying, Yeah. but you know, it's like, it is true. Like you're easy. Like I'm excited to watch this. If I was out there, make sure you share this out. James put a lot of value here. He talked about a lot of success secrets that are probably used by a lot of people, but nobody talks about openly as much. And he shared his stories. He shared a lot of things for networking and how to build up your network and shared his tool in phone and, you know, shared a lot of stories that honestly, man, it was just like, I was laughing the whole time because it was just so entertaining, you know? <laughs> Thanks bro. Yeah. Yeah. So, so make sure you guys follow James too. And I'm going to put his social media for Facebook. You can just go to at James Levins, make sure yeah. you get in touch with James Share networks. I know he's a networker. If you got a network out there, people that I know that are close with me, you know, I'll introduce you to James. He's an amazing dude. And share value. You know, make sure, make sure that you share value with other people because you never know when they're gonna send you an amazing contact. You know, right. don't always be like hand out, what are you gonna give me? Just share value, share value, share connections, and now watch connections come back. And definitely get the info when you're doing that, because then the, it'll be a lot easier for the connections to come back. So thanks, brother. <laughs> okay, I love that. Yeah, he's right, guys. Definitely get your info. And it'll help you. Yeah. So so info and sign up. Put the link up there one last time. Info and sign up dot com. Make sure you guys grab that today and get get with James and let's rock. So last words, James, beyond big influence show. What what would you say to the people? I would say to the people is uh, don't wait till tomorrow. Get it literally like start today. People go, well, you know, I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. I said, don't think. By the time you think about it, somebody already did it 10 times better or it's 10 years down the road. If you're feeling down and out, surround yourself with positive people. I always just love the saying, if you're surrounded by five miserable, negative people complaining, blaming the world over their problems, you're number six. If you surround yourself with five amazing people, positive energy that want to help lift each other up and make the world a better place, you're number six. So choose your happiness, you know, and again, you got to believe in yourself, surround yourself with those kind of people and set a goal, come up with a game plan and execute it. And if you don't, I tell you all the time, look, if you don't crush your goal the first time, it's OK. Now, it's not OK if you just give up. It's OK if you give it your all, because guess what? The second time you set that goal, you're 80 percent closer to crushing it. So just make it happen and uh, believe in yourself. That's why my final words to you. Believe in yourself. Make it happen. And I believe in you. So. All You're right. Here, Thanks for having James me Levins, Beyond Big Influence. Yeah. The man right here. Over right here. Right here. Over here somewhere. Ah. <laughs> I can touch him. He's right here. There he is, brother. High five. All right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming on the show. Make sure if you're watching this episode and you enjoyed it, check out the other episodes that we have. A lot of amazing guests we've had on the show. Make sure you go back and rewatch this episode. If you're here at the end, go back and rewatch from the beginning. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next episode. See and we'll have an, another amazing guest. All right. Bye, guys. Peace.